Hello, and welcome to the Alchemist Inkwo. This is your spiritual podcast for grounded people. I'm Emily. And I'm Crystalyn. <laughs> and my, my computer is not grounded. It is like making so many noises right now. I apologize for that. I'm like, it's I'm totally really good. grounded. Why is the technology a mess? Like, yeah. what is happening? <laughs> I do have to say, um, just this is a random story, but I saw that you were like holding a crystal and it made me think of it. So now I feel like I must share it on here because that's how random stories work. Oh, you're holding your, <laughs> that is a, a glorious socket, pop socket. It's the right kind of texture that I, that's my favorite thing. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> totally understand. Totally understand. Now I'm holding a crystal. What's your story? <laughs> you know, EV pop socket counts. It totally counts. <laughs> Um, so I've been slowly gathering uh, materials to like make an altar for my guides, not because they need an altar by any means, but because I want to, because <laughs> mm -hmm. it makes me feel warm and fuzzy. So let's be a hundred percent clear. It's definitely for that reason. Um, and I was building it up here in my office again, I'm, I'm kind of house shopping. So this all stuff kind of might be moving soon. Um, so I kind of paused on it, but I've had my finger on the pulse for things. So I found um, some really cool, like a like a black obsidian goddess body for Lacusta, which she really loves. Um, so she kind of picked that out. Uh, I have a statue of Apollo we got in Greece. So like he's gonna have that on there. But I've been waiting for one for Boris, who's my dragon. And I'm like, okay, like I keep finding like crystal dragon heads, and he doesn't like them. He's like, those are ugly. He's like, okay, so doesn't matter what color they are. He is not into them. But over the weekend, I saw a random TikTok and it was for, I'll show you when it gets here because it's really cool because I have a butterfly version of this, but it was a dragon stand and then it has crystal wings that you put on the dragon stand. Oh. It's super cool. It's super cool. And I was not trying to buy anything else for my office or for the altars or anything, but he finally was like that one. I was like, cool, <laughs> getting that for you then. It's also like really reasonably priced. So I was like, awesome. Absolutely. I will absolutely get that for you. Thank you for finally getting one. Um, but you, that reminded me of that story. And I had no chance to tell you that yet, but I, I was yeah. pretty stoked on it. It's also really cute because like when I found Boris, he like basically grabbed onto my back like, like a little tiny dragon and then he grew into like his actual size. And it's like a little tiny dragon with his wings out. And I'm like, it's like you and you grabbed on. Um, so anyway, small little victories, little, little victories there. What I always like when it speaks to the relationship, not just to the entity. That's really right. cool. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like, for example, the goddess body that I found, which you, if you guys mm -hmm. haven't seen them, they're like women's bodies carved out of crystal, basically. Yeah. Um, that's all. It's obsidian for Lacusta. Um, is she's a she's a lesbian and she loves the female form and she's like, I want that one. I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> that's why you want it. I get it. Okay. That's perfect. Really yeah. So it's like less for her and more for her tastes, which I think is just hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know that I um. I've been working more with the energy of Athena and I actually tried not to because I was like, oh, this is just hype because I was in Athens. But when I researched Athena being close to another another energy that I work with, I was just like, oh, that's interesting. It still doesn't resonate, though. I'm not doing it. And then uh, last week I did something and all of a sudden, truly, and I told you this when she just like stood right next to me, like, I'm here now. You did that. I'm here now. And I was like, cool, not ignoring you anymore. And I had this magnet and, and mom, if you're watching, I apologize, uh, but I'm guessing you'll understand. I had bought a magnet of an olive tree branch. It, mm -hmm. It's in the magnet. And I was going to give it to my mom when I see her next. And I was like, okay, well, I mean, you're here. Hi. And I've never been like a big altar person. I've got one for like when I do ritual work and stuff. And I usually just set as needed. And what I got was the, you should probably put something on your altar for me. And I was like, well, what do you want? I had the, the, um, evil eye that Malcolm gave all of us, but it didn't feel personal enough. And mm -hmm. I was actually instructed to put that on my computer to keep like negativity away from social media and like all that other stuff. So that was really mm -hmm. cool. But then I found the magnet and I was like, oh, I feel so bad, but that's on my altar now. So, <laughs> but it works there. It feels right there and it looks good there. And things have been going mm -hmm. really well since that. So it's, yeah. she's very like Mars Venus energy. So it made sense when they were at their closest in Leo in my perfected house and all that stuff that that mm -hmm. was the time that I was inspired to bring in this energy. And then she came through um, right after my mentor was like, you know, you have the asteroid Pallas Athena conjunct your descendant. And I'm like, oh, cool. So now I'm reading Demetra George's asteroid goddesses. <laughs> so I can get more information on that because I'm actually doing an asteroid workshop in Palm Springs with Demetra in December. 
Oh, that's so this was all so supposed to be happening. About that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I forgot yeah. about that completely. I knew you had that workshop. You told me about it. And then I just mm-hmm. gone. Uh, yeah. One other random thing, just for all the topic of guides this weekend, mm-hmm. I was asking my guy, this is so funny. I forgot to even tell you this because I was asking my guides on a, like, I need validation if I'm going to do this big thing that I will be announcing shortly this week. So if you want more information, it's going to come out this, well, I guess I could have, I've already announced it by the time this launches. So I guess yeah. I can share it on here make it official on here you have um, to guides want you to i know oh, I, just, you're just being like, I was being resistant i was like no 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 because like at present i'm like just building it i'm like it's not done but it will be done by the time you guys hear this claim it own it so say they it. can want me to god damn it anyway I'll, <laughs> I'll touch on that in a second i will touch on that in a second but i didn't know if i was going to do this thing they'd put it into my path like hey you need to do this thing and I was like "Mm, I don't know being like a human right and I was like well if you want me to do it you better validate that for me everyone knows my validation symbol is a rainbow um and I didn't even process this but yesterday I was like scrolling through TikTok and I saw a video of a cloud rainbow and I didn't think about it I did not think about it at all I was just like oh that's so pretty and I sent it to Weston I was like look how pretty this is whatever so I sent it to him Kept on about my day. Last night we sit down because every night we watch our TikToks together or yeah, whatever yeah. we send to each other on Instagram together so that we can like talk about it. So like one of the other, we don't just like watch it separately because we want to yeah. talk. Anyway, you get what I'm saying. We do the same thing. We get it. Yeah. Yeah. It's That's super awesome. fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really fun. And then you can get the, like, I can give context to why I sent certain things, mm-hmm. um, which is really helpful. Anyway. And he does the same. Um, but I was like, look at the pretty rainbow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And he was like, what? And I had to explain. I was like, I didn't even, I didn't even think about it. They just like slammed the most beautiful rainbow I've ever seen in my life into my face. And I was like, pretty rainbow. <laughs> you got to really appreciate the people in our lives who, who uh, share space with the energies in our lives because the whole Athena thing happened and I'm stomping around the house being like, well, if you want me to do that, you need to make it easy. Well, if you want me to do that, I need to do this. And Dan is like, is she being nice to you? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I just wanted to get to like have dinner and now I have to do all these things before I can sit down. <laughs> is she being nice to you? <laughs> nice enough. It's okay. That's super funny. I love it. <laughs> oh, amazing. Okay. Well, the thing I'm going to announce then um which many of you may have already seen this announcement since it will have it's all in the future for me as i'm recording this but it's in the present for you when you're listening which is such a trippy feeling anyway i am running a one-time only and i'm very honest about this this is a one-time only um mentorship program it is going to be nine weeks um and it is essentially going to give you all of the basics you need to live an intuitive an intuitively led lifestyle it's we're going to identify your psychic abilities and open and and get you ready to actually use them in real time including built in practice space um all sorts of magic stuff um my digital course psychic soul magic is the only thing that i have that is similar to what i'm doing but this is a fully mentorship based program you will have essentially call time with me every week for all of the nine weeks we're starting august 13th um and you will have the only opportunity i've ever offered literally ever offered and will probably ever offer as my business is growing bigger this is the only time i really have the space to do so um to really dive in and get that like a mentorship experience with me um not like i already do mentoring in my patreon which is awesome that's like a consistent mentoring every month we meet etc this is like a psychic 101 crash course with me (laughs) where we're going to dive in and really really help you um lock stuff in so um i since this is in the future i am assuming i launch this tomorrow or friday for you all which is i think the 14th i think 14th um Um, math yep the 14th is um so i should be launching it then or 15th that's probably the latest So if you want to get in on that, by all means, if you're on my email list, you'll get a notification first that it goes live. Um, If you're not on my email list, you should be. So I can give you a notification that it goes live. You can just head over to my website and sign up for email list there. Um, But yeah, it is literally the only time I'm going to be doing it. All of the information is on my website. There we are. Ta-da. I announced it, guides. (laughs) When you were, um, so sometimes I get to sit along with your guides when stuff Mm -hmm. is 
And it's really fun when you were saying like, okay, I guess I'm going to announce it. Everybody leaned in like, oh, we're going to hear it. We're going to hear it. And then you were like, okay, but first it was this big, like, ah, I know it was, it's a little bit of a rebellious nature of me to be like, I'm not doing it right now. <laughs> you know, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing to anybody who's listening. If your guides wants you to do something and you are going to do it, you get to still do it on your time. Yeah. I do it on my time all the time. Mm -hmm. like very much so I'll be like no you guys have to wait for that you want me to do it I will but you better make it the easiest as possible and then I'll take advantage of it uh, or those sorts of things so did it on my own time um but yeah that's that's the announcement that they have been literally shoving at me that I resisted and they're like nope you have to do this so obviously it's really a limited space ordeal like I'm not it's not open to like however many people sign up like I have very limited spaces for this because it's going to be like a one and done sort of situation. I want to make sure it's really good. Um, but they want me to do it. So here we are. <laughs> are you ready for the, I have this segue in my head. Are you ready for it? Yeah. Okay. So Emily, you mentioned <laughs> that you work with guides like Apollo and Lacusta and people that existed in history and mythology. How does that work? <laughs> Oh my god, that was beautifully done. Not robotic at all. I didn't even want um, to do that, but I was just like, oh, it's time to move over. I guess this is how we're doing it. We're segueing. So, Speaking of that, also just one of the random things segways, we're gonna have. Again. We're probably gonna have an announcement on next week's podcast. Yes. The two of us also. Yeah. Um yeah. and speaking which of we're history really excited. and mythology. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of those things, um, <laughs> excited about that. either next week or the week after, depending upon what we decide for timeline stuff. But it's so we know we keep teasing it, but we're teasing it more. Um, I do work with deities and Lacusta. Um, and basically what we're going to talk about today is something that our patrons did vote for, which is um, the concept of myth or history and does it matter? Mm -hmm. um, what we have found a lot, especially recently when people are wanting to do deity work or they're running into a guide that maybe wasn't like a deity, but just existed a long time ago, La Costa, <laughs> um, <laughs> people really get hung up on the stories mm -hmm. that we have record of, um, about said deity. And so we kind of wanted to just talk through the energy of that and like kind of the difference between myth and history and, if it matters at all for the beings that you're working with mm -hmm. um because it's it's kind of a big topic especially right now when it's in like literature myth retellings are the thing right now like that is like the way dystopia was in the 2010s like we're hitting myth retellings hard right now well and if you think about it like one of the main core concepts that we work with in the forgotten storytellers is we acknowledge that your characters in some capacity are real yeah. And, they and it, they are, whether they are guides, whether you're doing historical fiction and like with you, you channel in La Costa and you write a story that wasn't told in that capacity, or even in mm -hmm. your own faith, where sometimes the, mm -hmm. um, the archaeology or the science hasn't caught up with verified or whatever, something mm -hmm. that you believe, do you have to stop believing it because you don't have proof? Do you have to believe something else because there is more proof or whatever? Like, my my history with this actually came one day when I was, you know, I've I was raised Christian, have had a relationship with the energy of Jesus and Christ my whole life. Um, so it was, you know, it was a quite a shock for me when I started really questioning the institution of Christianity. Cause I was like, but wait, I talk to you all the time. It's not like that, but I talk to you all the time. So I can't just drop this, you know, cold turkey because, mm -hmm. you know, I have a friend here and it's one of my guides and it's you. So we talk. Mm -hmm. And so over the last year, I was just observing the evolution of that particular religious structure and just being like, my gosh, there's so much to look at uh, and to have mm -hmm. thoughts about and to have feelings about. And I thought to myself, you know, like, what would happen if they did prove that you didn't exist, like that you weren't a human being on planet and stuff like that? And I said, what would all the Christians do? Mm -hmm. And he said, absolutely nothing, because you tell my story. So I'm real anyway. And I remember thinking, oh man, that's so true. Because if you tell a story, it doesn't matter if the person had a physical existence or not, because yeah. you still have the relationship with them. You still know their personality. You still know how they would think. You can still do the WWJG thing because you have a concept to go by, or you can mm -hmm. WW insert character or deity or whatever's initial here, D. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and 
<laughs> and then okay so really quick that too. It, in one piece um which i know you have not watched or read it is a big commitment but there's something called the will of d and so like <laughs> monkey d luffy and like the, a bunch of people like gold d roger a bunch of people have d for their middle initial and there's something about oh the will God. of d and so you're like d at the end i'm like yeah what would the will of d be like, wwdd <laughs> exactly though like mm-hmm. it's the same concept right it is 100 so, percent. so that's perfect actually mm-hmm. but that's the thing like you know whether it's a, a historical tangible fact as we define them right now or mm-hmm. it's a truth with a capital t Either way, what you believe motivates you and you interact with it. And some mm-hmm. that's something to A, take responsibility for, but mm-hmm. also B, build a relationship with, question, understand, p- uh, pursue and investigate because what you do believe is real for you, no matter what yeah. you've decided to believe. Yeah. So in my experience, to touch on exactly that, because mm-hmm. I completely agree with everything you're saying. Um, mm-hmm. In my experience, like working with Hellenic polytheism and there's a big when it, when you're in a structured space like that there's a lot of push on like the stuff we know so it's a lot of like going off the myths and going off the hymns and going off of that sort of thing and that obviously is not necessarily my vibe because every time I talk to deities um I one time had Artemis and I was talking to Artemis um about a certain kind of like reading thing that I had and I was like okay but is there a myth with you doing this thing and she just looked at me she's like you know like five percent of the stories about us on planet were actually passed down right like that's like there's like nothing about us like your whole perception of all of the deities is completely wrong because you're going off of like quite literally five percent of that our one story. time at camp I did this and it's my whole reputation now uh-huh. <laughs> it's exactly that it is exactly that and I was like oh no I didn't actually think about that. I was going off of like the archetypes that were assigned to you essentially. And she's like, yeah, like for the most part, the archetypes are right. But like, so (laughs) that's like one facet of our personality, like rude. Um, So just on that note too, when you think about, especially really heavily oral traditions, like obviously when we're talking about ancient Greeks, a lot of them, there was an alphabet there. Like that was, you know, I mean, Myth-wise, Cadmus brought the alphabet, right? So like (laughs) that also comes from a myth, but they had a system of writing. They had a system of like actually writing down these stories, but still it was a predominantly oral tradition in a lot of ways, especially in like just towns and stuff. And so when the deities would go do stuff in just random towns, like we didn't get a lot of those stories that are left over. We mostly have the ones that were valuable or seen as valuable enough to be written down. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's where we get it. And that is still a a culture we have the most stories from for myths and stuff. I mean, Mm -hmm. for the most part, like it is a really prolific society as far as myths go. But if you think about all of the other deities across all of the other religions across all of the world, most of those deities and those deity stories come from oral, almost strictly oral traditions. Mm-hmm. Um, or occasionally you'll get things like the Norse myths, which are almost strictly or- oral traditions as well. But we get like some runes that kind of give us a story like that's not that's not the whole picture at all. So when people come in with like this myth or history or, you know, how, how did it really happen or did they actually not walk on planet, blah, 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 blah you don't know any of the story if you're just going off of that so i'm big on like redefine your own history talk to your own deities talk to the to your own guides about like what actually happened tell me your story also to side note all of them were written by men so <laughs> yeah that doesn't work there's, well there's some tone there <laughs> yeah. whether that's like bible stories or the ancient egyptian stories or you name it it's men also with like a lot of our histories too like Mm -hmm. people and be really wary of this too like people will throw out historical fact really this this is how it happened and I get a lot of pushback on my videos whenever I talk about channel history because people be like that's not how it happened this is the historical fact and it's like really how 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 please tell me how you know that historical fact because it's usually someone who had a theory about something who had a theory about something Mm -hmm. and that it's way far back and then it's just been like well this is most likely what happened so we're just going to throw it there like you cannot sit there and say that that is historical fact because we don't know we weren't there so like Mm -hmm. well and you know where can you get the most empirical data 
you know, mm-hmm. as far as historical facts, someone wrote it down, but were they the one who discovered the archaeological evidence? Did they have enough evidence to actually put a story together? I remember um, back during June with Pride Month, someone on TikTok created a song about, you know, when when archaeologists dig up my bones in 100 years, you and mm-hmm. I will be the same, which was mm-hmm. an amazing, I wish I could remember the creator. If you see this song, listen to it, like it, engage with it. It was amazing. Um, but an archaeologist duetted this. And said, Mm -hmm. this causes so much problems in the study of archaeology because, A, we don't look at all this, you know, like it's not that big of a thing for us. And it gets Mm -hmm. in the way of us being able to do research. So even the biases of whoever funds the archaeology and, you know, Mm -hmm. with astrology, we have this too, where a lot of astrology texts were sponsored by the Medici's or somebody who Mm -hmm. didn't want astrology real they wanted you know just copy this book down so i have it in my library and i can say i have it so the astrologer had to write stuff down to be like praise god for this or you know as god wills and whatever mm-hmm. and they did believe like if you go way back to valens five thousand years ago you get the sort of like this is passed down from hermes trismegistus hermes the thrice great and like mm-hmm. we get these things they're divine there's this watch the sky pay attention to what it does it's very much a magical practice i i would mm-hmm. argue that valens anthology has a lot of grimoire to it mm-hmm. um from from things that i've personally read and i can do a whole thing on that later um but later when people were trying to maintain things for posterity outside of papyri and things mm-hmm. they had to make sure like william Liddy, lily wrote christian and astrology is what it was called mm-hmm. part of the reason for that at least as far as I'm told from my teachers, is if you called it Christian, it wouldn't get burned. <laughs> I was going to say, so you don't get murdered. Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, and again, there's nothing wrong with the faith of no. a Christian. Um, you know, I still, in, in many ways, I talk to Christ all the time. Jesus and I are like close, right? Um, but the the standards of living under rules that have to meet a certain criteria Mm-hmm. We don't all thrive in every single circumstance. And so sometimes you have to adjust things to survive. Yeah. And whatever the case was, whatever the ruling belief system was today and in history, sometimes things had to be adjusted in order to at least help the knowledge survive in some form. Yeah. Modern biases is like, a, it's it's a big issue. Like our modern bias flavors what history looks like. Just Mm -hmm. like the people who wrote history had their own bias that flavored what history looked like. My favorite TikTok, and I've referenced it on here before, but it's literally my favorite. I will go back and watch it every couple months because I just think it's so freaking funny is, you know, modern historians trying to figure out exactly how much a thing of wheat cost in the year 1100 and ancient historians telling basically the story of like a dream their brother's cousin had one time. Like just That's how history was written down just random and like things that mattered to us now didn't matter then so they didn't write down like the I don't know if you've done any research on like the third condiment that used to be on tables no there used to be three condiments used to be salt pepper and something else we don't know what the third thing was we know there was a third thing because we found archaeological evidence of the third thing but everyone just it was so common no one wrote it the fuck down so it's just (laughs) there (laughs) so we just know that there was a third condiment but whatever that is and also just to circle back around too, like last week, I think it was, they discovered that our perception of hunters and gatherers was entirely wrong because people misgendered yes. a whole bunch of skeletal yes, remains. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. So like that is how it is constantly changing. It's constantly morphing, which is why channeled history is such a passion of mine. I think it is so fucking important because whatever you're, whatever person from history you're channeling in, whatever they're telling you, first of all, they have their own biases, but chances are good. They're telling you the thing, like they're telling mm-hmm. you what actually happened or that at least their version of events in some capacity which is more than we can get in so many different ways. Yeah. And it's at least more accurate sociology of the time, if not Mm -hmm. archaeology. Another thing that I always get irritated by, you know, when you speak about our perception now informing our interpretation of the past Mm -hmm. is how so many people think that because it happened thousands of years ago, people were dumber. Yeah. No. (laughs) All the time, like in comment sections and things like that. And Mm -hmm. I'm literally here learning so much from ancient astrology that they knew more than we do now because we're so Mm -hmm. dumb sometimes like we have the capacity to be brilliant every individual has amazing potential but i just think that our efforts in maintaining 
the intellectual integrity of history. And I don't know what broke along the way that people just started saying, oh, well, they were just dumber back then. They just didn't know. I can tell you the astrologers knew the earth was round. Yeah. No, it was it, what it was. And I've actually talked a lot about this with my with people in history because I was really frustrated by that because you talk to La Custa and she is far smarter than I am, for sure. Right. She's way smarter than me. And I will own that forever. I'm like, wow, you are brilliant. I would not have got there. Um, but what happened was uh, the Middle Ages and the Catholic Church. That's what happened. Sure. Yeah. Um, so they deprived everyone of knowledge, gave reading only to people within the church and literally set us back thousands of years. Um, it, school was a right in ancient Rome. <laughs> school was a right. Like they would host school. School was not done in buildings. It was done out in the middle of squares. So whoever wanted to listen could listen so mm-hmm. that everyone could read and everyone could be. Literate. That's why we get so much graffiti from ancient Rome because everyone was literate. Everyone yeah. was literate. They, we just, just this year discovered how we we're pretty close to making the same recipe for concrete that the ancient Romans did, that the aqueducts are still made out of yeah. just this year. <laughs> and it's because we decided, oh, maybe they weren't talking about fresh water. Maybe they're talking about salt water. That mm-hmm. was the thing. Like, and so it's just, too. yeah. So there's so many things like that. People in ancient history are brilliant as hell people in like even medieval times were really really smart but they were intentionally deprived of the ability to grow knowledge and we are still carrying that burden now because the systems that worked were destroyed and now we're starting from the ground up yeah i remember in college uh, i was an english major and i took a course called the history of the book and it was just the book right like all books but there was a lot of time mm-hmm. spent on the, the gospels of the bible because mm-hmm. an influential book and uh, one of the things they said was about this, you know, how people didn't have literacy or you had to speak and read Latin in order to understand mm-hmm. the Bible. And that's where hymns came in. And mm-hmm. one of the things as a kid, I refused to sing hymns for some reason. I thought that like these things were created by the person who's, I have this weird preoccupation with death. I'm a Scorpio rising, Scorpio moon, Pluto and Scorpio on the ascendant. Like I get it. Um, lots of like death doula work in my life. But even as a very young kid, I was like, the person who wants me to sing this also is going to make me die. It's like, they are, they're the ones who want death to happen. And I never understood that as a kid. And then I'm in history of the book and they're like, oh yeah, the hymns are what they wanted you to believe about the Bible. And you could sing it because if you sang it, you could remember it. And that's how you remembered the story of the Bible as they wanted you to know it. And I'm just sitting there like, oh, so it wasn't necessarily the integrity of, again, the energies that you're working with in that faith, but the integrity of the way the story was given. Mm-hmm. And one of my big like things just in life is people, I, I think the the difference, I realized this over the weekend, it's a weird tangent. So cut me off and like edit it out if it's not a good thing. But um, I prefer the belief system where if you have a mentor or if you look to someone for information, it is someone who gives you information that sends you on your way and your path to research deeper for you. Mm-hmm. I have the biggest, I bounce off of people's energy or belief systems when some one person takes responsibility for educating everybody on how they should think. And when those people look to one person to tell them mm-hmm. what to think without thinking for themselves, you run into this a lot. It's a slippery slope, but I think it's one that we definitely slipped <laughs> down in history a lot. Mm-hmm. It's cult. I mean, that's, that's where we get cults that's from it. is because exactly it's too much of use. the, yeah, yeah <laughs> too much of that. And that's why when we teach people, we're always like, we're teaching you fish. We're teaching you to fish. Like we are not teaching you to rely on what we say. That's why I don't let people schedule back-to-back readings with me or readings once a month with me because Mm -hmm. you need to wait six months and live for a while. And then we can check back in. That's part of the reason I keep my calendar so far booked out Mm -hmm. because they can't just immediately turn around and rebook. It has to be a waiting period. You have to wait. You have to experience things and go for yourself because that's what life is period <laughs> yep. my current also structure just... even for sorry even for people no, 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 who, go, go, go. who no, like, go, go. are with me as their personal astrologer you mm-hmm. get like every other month because i'll mm-hmm. go through the transits with you but then we need to let them happen and see what did happen not mm-hmm. like we'll project and we'll say this is likely what's going to happen but then let's see what does happen and now that we have that we can see more personally more detailed what could mm-hmm. happen next and then like how do we do do your life your way um i yeah. think guiding and mentorship is so much more important than mm-hmm. preaching. You know, one yeah. of the things that I've always liked about um, 
when you think about Jesus, they called him preacher, they called him son of God, all these things. The one thing he he mostly called himself and the disciples called him was teacher. There's a difference. Mm-hmm. There's a subtle, like not owning power kind of difference there. That's always been very important in my thought process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is also, I will use in the forgotten storytellers stuff. We'll be like, Hmm, that sounds like a belief. Or yeah. we'll be like, Oh, what do you think is going on? It's a lot of like Socratic style stuff. Yes. The prompt it in. I just, <laughs> I just wanted to circle back around to the hymns thing mm-hmm. because that is so true. And it's what we do with modern day commercials too. It's the same, yeah, um, the, it's the same energy. <laughs> A hundred percent. Like that's why there's jingles. Like I can still like remember the canine advantage jingle from like when we were kids. The hell um, mother. Uh-huh. That hell one. Mother. That one. Exactly. <laughs> now you've them. now you've cursed everyone. <laughs> Look at you go. <laughs> that will be second your heads forever. If it's, if it's something uh-huh. you feel like doing today. <laughs> um, I need that. Um, but just it's interesting because also us being raised in different Christian denominations, almost all of the catholic mass is sung which i don't know if you haven't been in catholic mass like it is almost entirely sung (laughs) or a call and response or something like that or kneel stand sit kneel stand like all of these sorts of things like it is incredibly (laughs) ritualistic it is incredibly pagan i'm not it's very pagan also like christianity as a whole is a pagan religion you worship three different deities that's paganism that's just beside the point that's my own little mountain um but it's a really you walk in you bless yourself with holy water and from pretty much the moment you step in you are singing the whole damn time um or reciting hymns or like and also with you all of those different things um which is intentional and it's also super duper ancient that is it like the what catholics do now is what catholics did a thousand years ago it's the same Mm -hmm. it doesn't it hasn't changed yeah no at all which means the same stories have been told for that long all of the whole thing but it's survived that long partly because most of it is sung it's really important so I just wanted to highlight that too of like yeah yeah I used to um I was a Sunday school teacher and I led a bible study in my church before I was asked not to anymore and it's because (laughs) it's because I would I remember they introduced the Apostles Creed we got a new preacher and he was like we're gonna do this now and I was like cool a new thing and we're everybody's doing the Apostles Creed and mom's like why aren't you saying it I'm like I don't know if I believe it yet like why are we all saying this in unison that you're saying something And that means that you're owning it. Like you're putting it out there with your voice. And, Mm -hmm. you know, when someone uses your voice, it's, it's your vibrant, your vibration, your frequency, all of those things. It's very important and it's very personal and it's kind of an intimate thing. Like when Mm -hmm. you give your vows at your wedding or whatever ceremony of unity you might get, or just a promise of commitment to someone, that's your voice that Mm -hmm. you use to do that when you sing and express yourself it's your voice when you write something it's still your voice Mm -hmm. um so i'm not going to put mine i i have a hard time even singing songs i don't agree with even if they're catchy and sometimes those things are bops and so (laughs) so i'll sing stuff and then i have to like not sing that word but i'll keep singing and it's it's just (laughs) something that's like always been very important to me uh in that capacity and there was something else i wanted to say but i can't remember what it was so it must not have been too important yet okay well, yeah. So circling background, myth or history doesn't matter. No, <laughs> that's the answer. That was a really long word really way well. to say a two letter word. <laughs> but no, it's it doesn't the matter. And podcast episode ever. Right. Well, and also if you have a deity um, like bugging you, like, look at this myth or talking to me about my myth of this and you can't find anything on that myth or a guide being like, ah, I've lived during this time. Look at this and you can't find anything on it. Ask them for their story and just go with it. Mm-hmm. because their story is going to be the one that, that is necessary that's the one that they're trying to get you to talk about anyway or understand anyway so if whether you find it concretely because it was one that happened to be passed down by whatever men decided it was worthy of being passed down or if it's one that they're handing you right now is hey this is a truth thing like okay it is always a good idea or 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 allowed it is always allowed mm-hmm. to ask the question why mm-hmm. and if people get angry at you for asking that sounds like a belief for them. Um, but yeah. also find another source to to inquire in or find a different source to to look into. Asking why until you feel like you know for sure is the best way to do your research. And yeah. as far as sources go, again, Emily, you're doing your mentorship thing. I'm launching a whole school uh, in like a month or so. If mm-hmm. you feel like you found a person or a source or a, a school or a whatever that can help you answer your question, why, or at least give you more information that will take you on your way. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, absolutely. Fully, fully yes on that one for sure. Um, but yeah, so that is the long way of answering that question. Um, we hope you got a lot out of that though. We did have a question in the Patreon that mm -hmm. is more um, us talking about like our neurodivergent brains. I think that it's going to mm -hmm. be us talking about our spiritual brains. It's more the bookish side. Basically, the question was, how can you re remain focused when listening to an audiobook or a podcast? Um, some people have a really hard time with that. And if we have any tips. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we have tips. Yep. We definitely have tips. <laughs> Do you want me to go um, first? You go for it. You go okay. for it. Uh, so I listen to audiobooks in the morning. And when I am doing chores or when I am like putting food together, um, I would say cooking, but most of my food is just like assembly. So it doesn't feel like cooking. Uh, when I am listening to an audiobook, I listen the best when I am walking on a treadmill and playing Sudoku at the same time while listening to the audiobook. I don't know why, but it's enough activity for my body and enough for my mind to do in addition to listening that I can actually hear the words on the audiobook. And I also mm -hmm. listen to them at 1.26 speed. Mm -hmm. because if it's faster, I can pay attention better. So it's interesting. I actually don't listen to it like it, listening to it super sped up. Um, I don't know why I don't, but I just don't. It, it bothers me. I'm like, that should have been drawn out longer. I don't get the <laughs> emotional buildup. Like there's some sort of that there sitting there. I don't know why, uh, but I will say the same thing. Um, if you can also sit there and be doing something else, I will color or knit um, or play a game on my phone while I'm listening, anything like that. I usually will listen a lot when I'm washing the dishes um, because again, I'm doing something else. I cannot just sit there and listen to anything. <laughs> so if that's you, yeah, totally get it. Even watching TV, like I have to be doing something else on top of watching TV. Yep. It's sitting there and staring that's at something right, is like not that. cool for me. Um, if I'm really enthralled with a movie or something, my body will start to physically shake. And I think that's part of me preventing that from happening is doing something else at the same mm -hmm. time. It's done that since I was an itty bitty kid, by the way. My body just gets starts shaking like violently. Every time I've ever left a movie theater, my body is just like, mm -hmm. like horribly shaking. My mom used to be so freaked out. I'm like, it's fine. It was just the suspense. And it'd be like a Disney movie. And she'd be like, what? <laughs> it doesn't worry. Don't worry about it. Um, so that's a big one. The other thing though, and I really recommend this, um, if it is an audiobook and you feel aligned with also getting a digital or paper version of that book, follow along while you listen. Um, you get a lot more out of it and you can get kind of what you are also like when you're focused that way, you're focusing in two kind of ways. That's what my, uh, one of my kiddos has kind of learning issues and that's what she does, um, all the time. I know the Kindle app will actually do there's mm -hmm. this uh version of it where if you're listening to the audiobook in the Kindle app it will highlight mm -hmm. the word that it's on as it's going through mm -hmm. the, the cool. ebook which so sometimes I'm just like that is the coolest thing um and it's it's really cool to have yeah. that so that can be really helpful uh too the other thing is just think about like if you're finding it's really hard for you to pay attention because your mind is wandering somewhere else but you'd like to be reading right now mm -hmm. do like a brain dump first like walk around and vent to somebody or like word vomit onto a piece of paper for five minutes or something where you take all of the stuff that needs to be thought about and you put it somewhere else and then go to listen to the podcast or to the book because that you've taken that energy that's sitting there and you've pulled it and put it somewhere else to be held that's not just inside your head and it'll give you that freedom to kind of go go forward from there because you have eliminated some of the chaos mm -hmm. yeah yeah I will do big venting, <laughs> big venting. Um, also, I will oftentimes listen to audiobooks in the shower as well, because again, showering, doing other things. But I always make sure that I do like block pulls and spiritual work first before I start, um, because then it feels like I've checked off the things I also want to do for my spiritual mental health. And now I can listen to the book. So it doesn't feel like I'm bypassing or the podcast. Sometimes it'll be podcast. So it doesn't feel like I'm bypassing or anything. It just feels like I'm now now this space is set aside for this. So I feel aligned with it. Mm -hmm. yeah hopefully that helps hopefully that helps um <laughs> slow with that see how that goes uh we we support you audiobook wise um also if you <laughs> if you have a hard time listening to us you can watch us mm -hmm. we're on youtube um also we have spotify video now so yeah. you can watch this as well if that makes it easier for you that's why we do it in the two different mediums quite literally for that purpose is so mm -hmm. that it's as easy as possible for our listeners or our watchers to watchers viewers we got there 
Um, you can take it all in. <laughs> them um, to participate. Mm-hmm. But yeah, do you want to really just super quick, quick touch on the astrology that's coming up this week? Yeah. So um, as far as transits go over the next week, it's not as busy. Like the week that we're living in right now has a lot of Mercury transits. The day we record this uh, on Monday, the 10th, Mars has finally moved into Virgo. Uh, So that separation from Venus should be a little bit uh, more like you can feel that happening now. And that intense energy from last week should be kind of settling more and more. Um, that being said on the 22nd, so after the next episode, but we're gearing up for it. So I want to make sure we talk about it. The 22nd, uh, Venus will be stationing retrograde. The transit I want to talk about is actually on the 20th because Mars now is in Virgo, like I said, and will oppose, uh, retrograde Saturn in Pisces. Mm-hmm. And so that's both malefics in opposition to each other. And an opposition has the nature of Saturn. So Saturn in Pisces, Mars in Virgo, neither of them's like very strong or debilitated. They're both like kind of whatever in those places. I could dig into triplicity and maybe find something for them. Um, and I'd have to really look at their terms, but that's again, being very subtle support for a transit. So we see them just sort of glaring at each other in passing it's like when you see someone that you don't like from like high school or whatever and you're older now so you shouldn't have beef anymore but you still do so you just give each other that quick glare while you're passing uh so there's this tension between what you want and what you're being asked to wait for that Mm -hmm. you might notice at the time mars is ambitious mars is in virgo so mars is being a little bit nitpicky and detail oriented saturn's in pisces retrograde is saturn so is pulling on mars and saying like hey wait and Mars is kind of having anxiety about getting started. Um, I think it might be best to think about plotting out your to-do list of all the things you need to get done and then thinking about the best way to do them one at a time. Like what's the most accessible thing? How do you give yourself resources for those things? What is the outcome of those things? And then you're going to find that those tasks may actually give you something to think about also during the Venus retrograde. Love that. Yay. Yeah. I will also say this week, the energy really looks like it's um, pushing everyone out of their comfort zone. So mm-hmm. we can describe it yep. like pretty intensely, like, and not necessarily in a bad way, but in a like, Hey, guess what? You're now out of your comfort zone. What you going to do sort of way. And sometimes that's for, cause you're doing something big and cool. And sometimes that's for, um, because something is out of alignment and now you're out of your comfort zone. So you need to see that and readjust. Uh, but that is every time I've looked at for the last couple of days, I keep looking at the energy of this week, like, what's it going to do? How's it? And it just, that, that's what it's doing. <laughs> yeah. Now that Mars is in Virgo, um, Mars being lots of energy and Virgo being like earth detail oriented and very, um, specific. A lot of times anxiety is associated with Virgo just because there's a lot of like, there's a right way to do this and I want to get it right kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, So it makes a lot of sense. Plus Mercury, you know, doing Mercury things right now, talking to Neptune and now Pluto. And I, I think there's even an interaction later with Uranus. Um, Mm -hmm. So we've got some stuff coming up. Uranus, chaotic, neutral Mm -hmm. at the core. Just chaotic. (laughs) Chaotic. That's the neutral bit. It's just like, what am I going to do now? Uranus has got me again. So, yeah. Oh, awesome. Well, everyone, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for listening. We so honor and appreciate your presence in this space. Um, yeah, if you want to vote on these episode topics or ask us questions or any of that jazz, head over to the Patreon. That's where you can do that. Um, and we hope that you take all of this energy and that you go, go make, make some magic. Some magic. So I weird. I know, but according it's to the people so that weird. The before, so let us know. <laughs> <laughs>